A staggering percentage of young people are suffering from tooth decay and one of the key reasons behind this is sugar consumption. In the UK, the biggest reason for hospital admissions amongst children is due to tooth decay. Official data has revealed an 18% increase in the number of extractions taking place on children in hospitals since 2012, costing the NHS £205 million. According to the Gov website, in England alone, a third of children are obese or overweight when they leave primary school. And evidence shows that 80% of kids who are obese in their early teens will go on to be obese adults. Therefore, by noting the affirmation figures, it's clear that something has to be done to combat this. Not only does high sugar consumption contribute towards increased cases of tooth decay, it also results in high levels of childhood obesity. This in turn can result in a number of other related medical conditions. In a battle against these rising phenomena, as of April 2018, the government in the UK has introduced the soft drinks industry levy, also known as the sugar tax. It was first introduced in March 2016 and brought into action as of April 2018. This movement has been established to help benefit millions of children by encouraging manufacturers to reduce the sugar content of their produce. The levy was subdivided into three categories known as the high levy, the low levy and the no levy drinks. It consisted of an extra charge placed on soft drinks that went over a certain sugar content. Consequently, this encouraged manufacturers to reduce their sugar levels in soft drinks. The charges were as follows. 24 pence per litre for drinks with over 8 grams of sugar per 100 millilitres, high levy category. 18 pence per litre for drinks with 5 to 8 grams of sugar per 100 millilitres low levy category, and no charge for drinks with less than 5 grams of sugar per 100 millilitres, no levy category. Fruit juices and milk-based drinks are exempt. Studies have revealed positive results due to the implementation of the SDIL and its successful means of acting as an incentive for manufacturers to make their soft drinks healthier by reducing sugar content levels. Studies reveal that the percentage of drinks with sugar over 5 grams per 100 millilitres fell from an expected level of 49% to 15% over the time period. There was little change in the product size or the number of products available to consumers. The price of high sugar drinks increased after the implementation of the SDIL, but only by one third of the amount of the tax. According to Exchequer Secretary to the Treasury, Robert Jenrick MP, the revenue raised from the levy will be used to support sports facilities and healthy breakfast clubs with an aim to encourage healthy living amongst the younger population. Even before coming into effect, the levy is already working. Over 50% of manufacturers have reformulated their drinks. Therefore, we can already see and expect positive results from this governmental movement. Sugar is the leading cause of tooth decay and all play a part in helping to combat this. Not only do manufacturers have to get involved, but patients and guardians alike. Coupled with the SDIL, patients should ensure they're visiting the dentist regularly and carrying out excellent oral hygiene regimes on a daily basis. With this in mind, the country can hope that the levels of tooth decay and obesity, especially amongst children, will show a decline in numbers. This in turn will help the NHS in being able to use its funds towards other unavoidable health concerns and medical interventions. What is the sugar tax and do you feel this is a positive step forward in tackling tooth decay? Is the sugar tax enough or are other interventions necessary? Explain the limitations behind the SDIL and possible ways to overcome this.